Jason Stark joins us now. Jason, I know you would like, it's kind of like 1870s. I'm just kind of making this up now. Uh, <laughs> region versus region, playing their own schedules, right? Uh, where yeah. it stands out to you? When you saw the 60-game schedule come out and you could see what was out there, what stood out? Well, Brian, I think 60 games is going to be a blast. Uh, what I don't think it's going to be is fair. And here's why that matters. Uh, these wild card races are going to be insane, right? But it's the first season in the history of baseball where teams in the same league fighting for the same postseason spot won't play a single common opponent. So this could very well come down to what's the strength or weakness of your division or the strength or weakness of the interleague division you're playing. I, I'll give you a great example. Uh, NL East, NL Central. We've got something like eight contenders in those two divisions. Their interleague schedules have switched. Take a team like the Cardinals. They were going to get matched up with the AL East. They were going to have to face the Yankees, the Rays, the Red Sox nine times. Now they've got the AL Central. They've got 10 games against the Royals and Tigers. It's a big chunk of their schedule. Mm -hmm. um, meanwhile, NL East teams were going to have the AL Central. Now they've got the AL East. It's a big difference. I, I'm sure that you've seen the fan grass projections, right? They've got 13 teams projected to win between 30 and 32 games. Mm. So there's not going to be any social distancing in these wild card races. They're going to be jammed together. You know, Jason, I did a, a little piece at the top of the show, but I, as I'm writing it, I'm wondering if the advantage will be what we think it will be. Like the Central we know is weaker, right? But if the White Sox and the Reds are improved, we're down to three rebuilding teams. I and mean, we can keep saying, oh, the Tigers and the Royals and the Pirates are down. Yeah, but that's it. You're, if, you're in the, if you're the Indians, you're still facing a steady diet of those good teams in the NL Central. Are we, can I make too much of that? Or do you think, no, there's a real difference? Yeah, I think that's a great point. I, I, I do. I, there's, there's no doubt that those divisions aren't what they were even a year ago. But on the other hand, you, you've still got the Tigers, the Pirates, the Royals. And those are three, I think we can all agree, of the weakest teams in baseball. So that's a big factor. And ju just thinking this through, look at these projections of strength of schedule. I think there's a reason why you're seeing these AL Central teams. You just put this box up, right? These AL Central teams are projected to have the easiest schedules in baseball because – You've got weak teams in your division still, and you've got no super teams, no mm -hmm. Yankees, no Dodgers. I don't think there's even a team like the Rays. Right. And you'll see they have the easiest strength of schedule and most all coming uh, again from uh, from the central. Though Dodgers look getting a break as well as if they need it. Rays, too. Yankees, <laughs> meantime, get 7 of 10 against Boston at Yankee Stadium. Cardinals, 7 of 10 in St. Louis against the Cubs. Astros, 7 of 10 against the A's in Houston. Um, did that ha why did that happen? I know you've looked into that. Why? Yeah, this is actually a function of schedule math. Uh, you know, I've got a confession to make. I'm actually kind of a schedule nerd. <laughs> I've looked into this quite a bit. <laughs> and I know I've seen, we've seen a lot of complaints from fans, from media, even from people within baseball saying, you know, every team should be playing just home-and-home five-game series against its own division, all these five teams in their own division. It doesn't work. Um, I, I know that you cannot fit multiple five-game series into a 30-team schedule puzzle. It just isn't possible. And the reason is you've got two leagues. Are they uh, an odd number of teams or even number of teams? They're both an odd number of teams. Mm. You've got six divisions, all an odd number of te teams in each division. And so you, if it, it would be one thing if you had a situation where every team – could be playing those five-game series strictly against their own division at the same time. It's just not possible with this alignment, and that has a lot to do with it. See, we, yeah, we need Pete, we need nerds uh, who look at scheduling I mean, to, <laughs> to figure this out, because otherwise we'll just lose our minds. Do you think this will lead to something down? Here's my surprise question that I did not alert you to. Do you think okay. now that we've seen, and clearly with, with this season, all bets are off, try anything as long as you can get on the field and play baseball, it'll be great. But do you think this now leads to an erosion of what we were used to and maybe time to move forward? You don't need an American League and a National League. That is something it is from a different generation. Do you think it leads to bigger changes in the way we schedule baseball and view Major League Baseball? Uh, look, I think this is definitely on the drawing board. I, I don't think it happens until you, you get expansion 
once you get to 32 teams and then you can divide it up into eight 14 divisions or there's lots of different ways to do it um, at that point I think expansion would take place with geographical realignment in mind and the result of that would be at least a blurring of what we now know to be the definition of the American League and National League and potentially I guess it's possible you would just wouldn't even have a National League and American League. I, I don't know if baseball's ready for anything that dramatic, but it's on the drawing board. It gets kicked around. Well, you remember, Jason, I mean, 20 years ago, it was seen as, like, sacrilege. You couldn't possibly. Now, even guys our age have yeah. to look at it and say, well, it really is something from 1903, and nobody is thinking, well, I'm an Al Kaline fan, I'm a Roberto Clemente fan, I'm a National League guy, I'm an American League guy. I mean, fans don't think that way anymore. Do we really need the two separate leagues? I, I didn't even plan to bring this up, but I'll bring it. Really, why? Like, why would we, why would we need it at this point? <laughs> well, the other linchpin is uh, Universal DH. If Universal DH is here to stay and both leagues are playing by the same rules, it's all about how much do you value tradition. Tradition's always meant more in baseball than in the other sports. It's a big force. Uh, you've got rivalries that you have to be careful about blowing up. But like I'm with you. At a certain point, it's cool to start reimagining what baseball can be. And part of that is reimagining what the leagues look like. Once you start doing away with the traditional alignments and traditional leagues, a lot of things are possible. Mm -hmm. Right? And so that's a big reason that this is within the conversation. It's not about just about tradition anymore. Look, I hate the universal DH, all right? I'm on the record with that. But, Jason, I would, if you're starting baseball now, there's no way you'd say, oh, we have a team in the Bronx and a team in Queens, but they don't play each other. Oh, we have two teams in Chicago, but they don't play each other. Two teams in LA, ah, they don't play each other. You'd never yeah. do that. It, it makes, I'm not looking to blow things up, but I'm just, I think this will lead to uh, an opening for those things. All right, Jason, we got to go. We got it. They're telling me we have to go. Otherwise, I'd talk okay. to you for a long time. Jason, you always too, a Brian. pleasure. Thank you very much, Jason Stark. There. Thanks, Brian.